Yeah, I, and he's almost certainly going to be there. He's going to win this election. I, I almost think, certainly. I think you and make fair points, well. Andrew, but you sound a little bit both sidesy. I, I don't know if that's I on take purpose that as a or not. Well, then you've just been complimented. Thank you. In your mind. <laughs> What an asshole. Welcome back. Thanks for watching, which you're probably doing because you want to see an MSNBC host get a much needed dose of reality about who and what he is. But unfortunately, while that does happen, it comes with some very intentional revisionist history by both sides of this debate that I have a very deep seated need to correct. And we'll get right into that, I promise. But first, just give me a moment to tell you about this free coin offer from Noble Gold. If you're trying to navigate market turbulence, why not set course to the Noble Gold Investment Safe? Haven. With global uncertainty looming, your savings and retirement plans are under siege. But there's one asset that has stood the test of time gold. Unlock the peace of mind that comes with owning gold, the ultimate safe haven. And if precious metals are new to you, Noble Gold Investments will hold your hand through the entire process. They have a team of experts who will guide you every step of the way to safety. Thousands of investors have shielded their retirement savings with Noble Gold Investments. Don't leave yourself exposed to the markets right now. It's way too risky. With gold at an all-time high and looking to climb further, it's the perfect time. And right now, get a free three-ounce silver American Virtue coin when you open an IRA with Noble Gold Investments today. Act now before it's too late. Call 877-646-5347 and claim your free coin now before it's too late. Or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. The only gold company I trust. And remember, there's always risk of investment and there are no guarantees of any kind. All right, just to set this clip up a bit for you, it happened during a segment on Bill Maher's HBO show with the MSNBC host, Ari Melber, and the uniparty-ish British conservative, Andrew Sullivan. And they're discussing the state media's favorite topic about how Donald Trump is a dictator who's a threat to democracy. Oh, great. I think what Trump set in motion and what the divisions of the country has done and what the Democrats have done the last four years, which has responded to Trump by going even further to the left, means that we are losing the legitimacy of the system. And that is the critical thing. When you lose that core legitimacy, you lose your democracy. That's where we're really going to lose our democracy because we don't believe in it anymore. That's and right. you can see that the result of that, the way this works, is you start disbelieving in all the institutions and then you say, who do I want? You want a strong man. Right. You want someone to come in and cut all the knots. This is the classic case of how you lose a democracy. Yeah, and I he's almost certainly gonna be there. He's gonna win this election. Well, why don't you cry about it? First, I just wanna point out that it's interesting they're using both a conservative and a liberal to literally just rewrite the history and make it conform to the state media narrative while making it look like a debate. No, what we're dealing with now absolutely did not start with Trump. Trump is the right, conservative, Republicans, whatever, response to the division that the Democrats and their state media were already creating. Lastly, Trump just can't be a strongman dictator. He can act like it and he can joke about it, but a dictator needs a support base. All of those institutions that Sullivan just talked about, except for maybe the Supreme Court, are all aligned against him. And they will do everything they can to prevent and resist Trump from even acting as a president, much less a dictator. You make fair points, well. Andrew, but you sound a little bit both sidesy. You sound like a gay. The far left and their propagandists like Ari here have been trying to normalize the idea that there's not two sides to a story story, there's just their side. They started with this narrative right after Trump won because they knew how biased and obvious their coverage would be, and this is their smokescreen. It's not propaganda because we're saving democracy, and it's too important for both sides. It's exactly the same thing when they shout whataboutism. It's an attempt to deflect from their contradictory positions and double standards. You can't call them out for taking the opposite position when it concerned their political opponents because whataboutism. Now this is the part that really bugs me. They claim that there's no equivalence, which is also part of this no both sides and what aboutism. It's all wrapped up in one big strategy to prevent you from holding them to their own standards. I, I don't know if that's I on take purpose that as a or not. Well, then you've just been complimented. Thank you. In your mind. <laughs> but there's absolutely problems with the. There's absolutely problems with the Democratic Party and the overreaction to Trump. We just spoke about the ballot case and its thinness, and we cover that all the time on the news. 
But there's not equivalence here on the problems that you just referred to. There's not equivalence on political violence. Wrong. There's not equivalence on responding to court cases. Bush v. Gore was very controversial, but there was no violent response. Wrong. And there was not any mainstream response from Democrats about overthrowing the certification. Wrong. And Al Gore actually showed up on Jan 6, remember it was that date, and certified it. So there isn't a both sidesism to this decay. And Wrong. Now, I've gone over this many times, so let me be brief. First of all, it's the Clinton years where all this division really started because you had popular figures like Rush Limbaugh tearing at Clinton every single day and a national media that saw it as their duty to defend him. And that's when they really showed themselves to be an extension, not just of the Democrat party, but of the Democrat president. In 2000, Democrats began the trend of election denial and yes, tried to decertify Florida votes. So there was not any mainstream response from Democrats about overthrowing the certification. They did it again in 2004 with Democrats attempting to decertify votes. Oh, that was different. Then Trump wins. And again, the public is told that not only is he in the election illegitimate, but he's an actual working agent of Putin. In all these cases, it was the Democrats attacking institutions. Hillary Clinton did it four years before Donald Trump did it. Bush versus Gore. A court took away a presidency. As we look at our election system, I think it's fair to say that there are many legitimate questions about its accuracy, about its integrity. Oh, that was different. I can't show you the video because every time I use it, they hit me with a demonetization or a copyright. But there was most certainly riots after Bush won. Michael Moore, a far left propagandist documentary filmmaker, even admits in his documentary Fahrenheit 911 about the riots that led to Bush's motorcade, which had bottles and objects thrown at it and had to speed away from the inaugural parade. Quote, no president had ever witnessed such an event and the motorcade sped off to quote, avoid an even larger riot. There's not equivalence on political violence. If you want to see that video, it'll be pinned on my ex profile for the next week. And you can find a link to that in the description and pinned comment. And of course, there were also riots at Trump's inauguration that basically went on for the entire four years. Not to mention the current wave of traffic blocking and nut job leftist Hamas supporters. You know what would be good at NBC, MSNBC is if you actually did think about both sides and weighed the arguments and make constructive arguments against that side while respecting them. You don't do that. It's propaganda you just, all the well, time. What you just said, by the what you just said just described my show. No shit. Oh, and by the way, all of these efforts to deceive the American public would never be possible without that institutional support base I was talking about earlier. So yeah, weird that these guys appear to be arguing, but in reality, they're both teaming up to revise history in service of the state narrative. What do you all think? Let me know in the comments, and if you're still here, might as well hit that like button. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.